Right. So good morning, everyone. I'm Claire Barrett. I am the archives manager at Mayor Archive Collective. Thank you so much for joining us this morning. Uh, we have a very special guest with us today for anyone who does not know him, Roger Stevens. He is an incredible Baba artist, former professor, and a very special Mac volunteer. We love him very dearly. Thank you so much for agreeing to talk about your work with us today. And I uh, will let you get started, Roger. Thanks, Claire. Um, I'm actually going to enjoy this because I was a college professor teaching art for 15 years. And uh, funny thing is, I would always wing it because I have such a working knowledge of art and art history and design and all that, that it made my job pretty straightforward to just go in there and here's what we're gonna talk about. And I had this, Baba would just let pull up this information. So I never would do all these copious notes, but I was a very popular professor. Um, what do I, my name's Roger Stevens and I've been a uh, painter since I was about 16 years old uh, in Miami, Florida, where I grew up. My parents were Bill and Peggy Stevens. And uh, even before we knew about Baba, I was uh, enchanted with uh, photography primarily. That's an interesting link I'm gonna talk about. And psychedelic painting, uh, which was very influential in, in the 60s for my life. And that's when I was in my formative years with art. Uh, all this leads up to the fact that uh, I, my father, was a photographer and he was an ocean photographer primarily, but he always had a camera and took photos of the family and uh, also artistic pieces. Uh, but mostly he made a living selling photographs that he took of ocean life because he was oceanographer and a writer. So I was very familiar with photography and he would show me basics of photography. And then when I got to high school, I was pretty adept at photography and was studying photographers like Ansel Adams and uh, uh, Weston and people like that, uh, as well as beautiful landscape photographers and ocean photographers like the Cousteau guys. Uh, then Baba came along. Baba um, literally came into our lives in 1969 and 1970. Uh, my dad met or was friends with uh, Rico Berry, who, uh, had just returned from the last star shot and he make a long story short gave my father a copy of god speaks my father being a scientist went home and read it in two nights and uh came out at breakfast and said to the whole family you know the my siblings and i and my mom mary baba is god because only god could have written this book uh, I'll, I'll never forget that that was that was really fun but he took the family he and my mom took the family uh to meet kitty and elizabeth and go to the center on my 17th birthday that summer. So that was almost a year, not quite a year after we'd heard of Baba. Well, it's all over after that. Uh, as you know, the heart was open. But there is one thing about that early trip that I wanted to point out. Um, I was 17, I was not in a search for God, although I experimented with drugs and I did some yoga and met some swamis and stuff. I, I wasn't really sure what God was, I knew that there was something powerful out there, obviously, and something wonderful, but I didn't really have any kind of personal experience with it. And uh, so living, living with my parents, obviously, and then being introduced to Baba was, was monumental. And one of the things that, that happened was I was really interested in art. And so the first thing I wanted to do was paint Baba. And I met Lynn Ott on one of my very early trips and, and Kitty encouraged me to make art. And so I felt really like, oh, I got a shoe in now. Well, that turned into a lifetime of academia, uh, including teaching. Um, and I got a lot better at painting Baba, which was my objective. I said, Baba, if, if I'm gonna paint you and you are who I think you are, <laughs> I really gotta be a good painter. And uh, so he laughed in my mind and said, just learn it and I'll take care of the rest. I've never made a living selling Baba paintings because I've never really tried. I've always have had other vocations that provided for me. Uh, but now that I'm retired, this is the end of the introduction, by the way, folks. Now that I'm retired, 
all I want to do is paint Baba. I, I, I can paint anything now. Baba has, has turned some kind of a key for me since I retired. And I haven't practiced, but I've just done it. Uh, and I have done so much Baba painting in the last uh, six or eight years. It's For me, it's phenomenal. Because I guess when I was a working man, I never had time to just do it like I wanted. But now, you'll see, I've got a lot of new work. Okay, that's my intro. Um, what I want to do today is show you some photos that I have painted. Okay, uh, you may see some other works that uh, some paintings in the background and things that I have done without photographs. Otherwise, other words, projecting or drawing it, you know, because I learned all that stuff in school. But the photos came about, the painting of the photographs came about with, I ended up with mountains of photographs since my early years because Hermes Lawrence Ryder was one of my best friends in Miami. And as you know, most of you may know, uh, Hermes Lawrence Ryder produced, still is known as produce, producing the finest photographs of Baba that in the world pretty much because he used archival material, he used original negatives, uh, everything had to, had to pass muster with him. So uh, Monty had told him he couldn't release any photos that were imperfect. They had to all be perfect, no flaws, no overexposure, no underexposure. So he did that all his life and whenever he had a bad one, he would give it to me. It was wonderful. Uh, he would uh, sign it on the back in pencil with my name. And that way he would know it was separate from the ones that he could sell. And he would say, he would give me big piles of these every few months, which is an incredible boon because they are, uh, to me, they're as good as any of his, of his work. And I got them by Baba's grace for free, <laughs> which is really sweet. I'm gonna actually manipulate this. Don't, don't let it break your heart. I've got several excellent copies of it but I'm gonna turn it into a painting for you guys, I hope. Not all today, but that's the first stage there. Okay, the next up is, um... oh, the reason, the big reason that I started painting photos is I had so many that were damaged or that were faded or that were a poster or something I got in the glow that I just had put aside because it was so wonderful. I didn't wanna, you know, toss it or put it in the pile with the glow magazines. Ever since I was really young with Baba, I was scolded like by people like Mansari to never throw away a photo of Baba. So it just became part of my life that I never threw them away. I just saved them and I have boxes and boxes of cards and uh, illustrations and uh, paintings and, but mostly photos of Baba, which I have a hard time throwing away. And I never seem to get around to making the dooney and burning malls because, and that's, I realize now why. I've been taking old photos. This is one from the 70s that we had in Miami. Let me show you this. This, was, this came out really nice. And I never much cared for this because the background was always washed out. I, it's somewhere in England in, the, in uh, 32, I believe. And, uh, but when I colorized it, 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 it somehow brought it into the present. And I really had a lot of fun, not to mention, I had a great time uh, working out some of the background stuff with color uh, because you don't get anything in the, in, the, in the faded black and white of this. So this was just here. Oh, by the way, I had this up for the season. This is Baba and the Great Pumpkin. Let me see if I can get that straight. Okay. So I am going to show you a few before I get started. Uh, that way I can pique your interest and, and you will have some questions and ideas about what I'm doing. This one I just did recently uh, at the Southeast Gathering last year. I, I created a, a large backdrop using Baba's flag as, as a uh, beginning point. And it was very popular. And I, I like the idea, too, because it's not a blatant Baba flag. It's just sort of the rainbow that Baba described. It's a little different, as you can tell. But uh, it worked great for the gathering. So I had this photograph of Bob on a throne somewhat with the, uh, the crown. And I don't know, you can see some details there. Uh, but then I just used my, my painting styles in the background, made it somewhat surreal. Great fun though, can't even tell you. 
I'm going to get up for just a second because I've got a couple of others over here I wanted to show you. Let's see, those are all paintings. I've got a large pile of works in progress. For example, this is one I hope to work on a little bit today. Here, this is a real good example of um, a recycling. This was on a poster for the Southeast Gathering. I think Ed Legum took care of it or something about 20 years ago, maybe even 30 years ago, 30 years ago. Uh, and it was just a thing that just said Avatar Mirababa and it had this great picture, but it was blown up to this size. Uh, and it had a, a pretty hard screen on it, a, a printing screen. You can see it in the background. It was great. And at the end of the gathering, I gathered up all the leftover posters and brought them home. So I have about six or eight of these, and I just periodically paint them. Um, this one, you say, oh, it looks finished. It's in a frame and all that. Brings up the next point. What I often do with the Baba photo, since I have so many sizes and styles of them, is I often frame or choose a frame before the painting is ever done. Because I am, I was a picture framer in Maui for 12 years and I fell in love with good quality wooden frames. So now this one, for example, back here, you can see not only did I find a nice wooden frame at a thrift store, but I used this washi tape, washi tape and embellished it so that you get beautiful little uh, Arabic types, you know, designs and it took a regular wooden frame and kind of just transformed it into something special. So I've been doing quite a lot of that also. In addition, some of you know of my Baba buttons. This is a large one. And what and this is a, a good example of, of painting Baba pictures. Good. Okay. Uh, this was uh, um, um, given to me by Al Grasso. And it's a pretty large button. And so he had uh, some problems, you know, selling these and giving them away. But I said, and also it was badly faded. Sometimes they come from India and they look rough. So he graciously gives me a lot of his reject ones. And so just the other day, I started repainting this one. Uh, it's a black and white, and you all are very familiar with the image, I know. But one of the wonderful things you can do with painting, even a Baba button or something, is you can eliminate background details that are uh, that take away from the image somewhat, and you can also, this is a scary one, but this this comes with a lifetime of painting. I can also sometimes successfully take Baba's eyes when they're looking to the, the side, and I can turn them toward me. And when I do, it's like, wow, you, you're in the room, you know. So that may happen with this one. I don't. Here are a couple. This is one that is almost complete. Now we're getting into, um, it's hard for me not to describe a little bit about the process when I'm showing you the pieces because they're all at different stages of completion. This is there again, just a poster, okay? Now this is what's exciting, folks. This is not mounted, okay? It's just a poster and you can see I'm having no problems painting it. Okay, so this one is kind of light. You'll notice it's not richly colored like some of the others, but that's generally the process when I'm painting these these uh, Baba photos. Is you, if you get too carried away with color early on, it may dominate the piece. You want it to look natural and photographic. So what I generally do on these, I can't help it. I usually start with Baba's face because I want to see that every time I look at the work. <laughs> So I tend to, even since time memorial, since I started painting Baba, I cannot stay away from his face and his eyes when I begin. I'll, uh, I've learned to get away from that in bigger paintings because it sometimes will dominate so much that I can't work on the painting because Bob is looking at me all the time. I know that sounds funny, but it's, it's kind of true. Anyway, this is a very famous piece. And you can see I've taken some liberties with the background, some painterly liberties, which is one of the best things about this process because you're combining being a painter with making the photograph of Baba as natural and realistic as you can. Uh, so you can say I took some liberties with the, uh, the couch there, uh, but this is wonderful experience painting Baba's hands or coloring them because 
most of us have a really hard time drawing and painting hands, even those artists among you. Uh, so drawing them and shade, I mean, coloring them and shading them has been a very good lesson for me about how Baba's hands actually work. So there's one. Um, this, uh, this process also is good for old funky artwork that you were never able to throw away. Um, this is a, a stencil painting that I did when I was about 18 or 19. So that's uh, 50 years ago. And all I, you can see this bits of glitter in it and purple. And you know, if I look at it now, I can see it's not that far from looking like Baba because I probably made the stencil from an actual Baba photo, transferred it on here and then tried to glump the paint through it. So this is how it looks. But my technique now allows me to opaquely change the areas like the eyes that are too heavily purple, put the tails in the, the, uh, into the hair. Maybe not so much that it looks like a photograph, but just that it's a little better than it was 50 years ago. Um, you might say, you know, these, these are special things that you did 50 years ago. Not to me. The closer they get to Baba, the happier I am. And I own them. I've not given them to anyone. I love to take my old work that has great potential and extend it. This is a print that I did in college. So this is in the 70s. And this was based on a Vermeer. And this is an intaglio uh, print. Well, it worked. It's pretty neat. It's uh, based on uh, Vermeer's uh, Letter from a Lover, I think it was called. And that's what I call it anyways, because that's what it is for me. Um, Bob is standing before the window in the, in the famous Dutch painting by Vermeer. Uh, I put, uh, I just changed everything uh, and did this with intaglia. So it's with biting acid. So there's not a lot of control. There's a little bit of reflection in Bob's face in the window. It's okay. But what I did years later, not too long ago, at the beginning of this painting photo things, is I primed this with a special material and then went into it with colored pencil and inks and watercolor. And now it's a color intaglio that's been enhanced beyond being an intaglio. So it's working on being a painting. Uh, there was some problems with Baba's face that I didn't draw very well 50 years ago, but it's getting closer now. Now you may see, see some of these out in the world. I've done a few of them, but this is also perfect kind of work for carrying it out with colored pencil and paint markers, which are now I'm going to give an overview of the process because time is ticking away. Here's one that is just starting. This is a large photo of Baba. And this, is, this has been kind of interesting too. This is, when I was younger, this is the kind of photo I didn't like of Baba. I have to say when I was a teenager and stuff. Baba looked like, you know, meaty and, you know, it's not his usual style. He's not looking at you. But over the years, especially in the last few years, I've become very drawn to these photos because the humanistic side of Baba has become much, much more important rather than the romanticized images of Baba from the 20s and 30s. This kind of stuff. And not to mention, there's a lot more to do. Now, one of the problems is, do I make the painting, I'm sorry, I'm moving it a bit. Do I make the painting just Baba, which I probably will because this information in the background is fragmented. So I can do one of my backgrounds, rich background, and probably will lose Francis back here. Uh, or I could make it a picture of Baba and Francis, but since Francis isn't looking at Baba, that doesn't really appeal to me. But you'll notice you say, this is not a black and white photo. Well, what I did was the first stage that I'm going to show you is take this large black and white photo and coat it with a magic substance, what I think is, because it's transformed <laughs> my painting, called a pastel ground. It's also called a grit ground or a sand base. What that allows, this has already been coated with the stuff. So you, you, you're making... A sandy, listen to this. This this photograph now has a sandy surface that has been applied with a liquid paste that is, when I first did it, I said, oh, I'm going to lose the image of Baba. You can see that I did not at all. But now 
the photo is ready to take colored pencil, uh, acrylic, oil paint, anything you want, uh, chalk, crayon, literally anything. I try to use very subtle, very natural materials like color pencil to bring out the flesh tones. But you can see, what's the pink? Well, a lot of time when I start these pieces, I have large areas to cover, like uh, this pink coat, like the pillows, like even his flesh on his face sometimes, his hand, the flowers. So I will paint them first just with a, a flat acrylic so that when I start working on the details, I've already got the base of the color. So you, this is interesting. I'm gonna try and catch this. Up here, I stopped using this stuff. So it's real slick like a photograph. You can see how the lights are reflecting on it. And then when it gets to the stuff, look how Baba is holding up with it, even with the reflection. So Baba's face has this material on it. Okay, enough said. This is my own that I put in a small container. It is a pastel ground, gritty, sandy. I just did that for you guys and for me to remember. Uh, and it lives in my paint box. And when I get ready to paint something, I simply coat it with this material and then I can start my painting. And all of these have now been covered with that material. Here's that other one, undone. So you can see some of the changes that have occurred in the photo in the one that I'm working on. Most This is mostly colored pencil. Some acrylic to, to get the background, but you can see how I eliminated the background confusion, especially this stuff on the other side of Baba's hands, a little confusing. Just kind of minimize that, draw it out his sleeve. Okay, so you're starting to see the possibilities. This is another example. This was a, a simple uh, a drawing I did of Baba um, using a projector. I had a, a picture of Baba and I popped it in my phone and I projected it onto this paper. Um, I wanted to see how the tooth of the paper was and it's a little slick for, for my preference. So I did the thing and I kind of just scribbled it while it's being projected. And I pulled it out and I says, oh, that's nice. Looks just like Baba. But over a while, I've had it for a year or two, it's starting to get smudged from the charcoal and it's not quite done to my satisfaction. <clears throat> so what I'm gonna do is spray it to fix it. Those artists among you know what that means. Fix it means anything that's very soft and, and uh, comes off easily like charcoal needs to be set before you can work on it without smearing it. Because right now if I put my hand in it, it would smear. So I just simply fix it, okay? This is the process, folks. And this doesn't have to be done with photos, but it does have to be done with certain art. And then I coat it with this stuff, which goes on. I think I've, I'm prepared to show you this. If you can bear with me, I've got a big, big brush here. I've got the material right here, okay? And please don't be shocked. I do know what I'm doing. Don't try this at home, kids. This lovely, lovely, one of my absolute favorite pictures, Baba here, is going to become a painting, okay? Now, what I wanted to show you also is, look, these other pieces are mounted, okay, for framing, but if you are, a, if you are careful and use this goop without a lot of water, you can continue working on this without it being mounted, which is kind of fun for, the, for those of us that have limited space. You can have a whole folder of these things begun and just open them up and color them someday. So here's, here's the photo. Please don't be shocked. I have great promise for this. Let's get it right here. So it looks cloudy when you put it on. And this material, you can find it under uh, the name of pastel ground because it was designed so that you can do pastels on paper or whatever and it gives it a tooth. See I'm just doing the image area not the edges so much but that's all I have to do. It's done now. Okay I'm just taking the brush strokes and minimizing. It looks like it's gotten cloudy but it will improve greatly as it dries. One more thing when I'm in uh, production mode I like to have a fan. Okay, so it's done. 
So you can see it still looks great, a little cloudy. It will clear out extensively and then I will be able to work on it with just about any medium, which is the exciting part of this. Anybody that's ever tried to paint anything on a photograph, we talked about Pondy earlier. I'll, I'll come back to that in a second. Notice that the painting, the, the surface of photographs is not ideal for doing any kinds of, of painting, but this makes it ideal. So what I was gonna say is I put this in front of the fan and uh, it'll be ready before this presentation is over. So I can show you, I can start working on it with colored pencil. That's where the real magic happens. So I put that in front of the fan and there's one over there that I just am working on too. This was a ancient one, very famous photo of Mir Baba. And um, not the most influential photo of Baba in my life, but for many people it was. Uh, so this was a Hermes and it was also a reject. I'm not sure why it had some little flaw or something. So uh, I've always had it as, as the oval. You know, I've framed it as ovals. I've got one in the house framed as an oval. Well, for the painting, I said, you know what? I've got, this is, a, this is an excellent size for a frame, 11 by 14, I believe. And I decided to try to get rid of the oval, which was a little bit challenging. As you can see, the paper was just thick enough to create an image of the oval on the paper, on the board. This is a piece of gator foam which is, does, as you can see, is wonderful because it does not warp. It's not like cardboard at all, or even wood. This is a very thin one, 3 sixteenths. But what I did after I mounted the picture, then I realized that I, I'm still seeing the edge of the oval. So I put a bunch of modeling paste, acrylic modeling paste, and when I go back into a color, I think I'll probably mostly be able to get rid of the, the edge of it. But um, here you can see extensive coloration in Baba's face. Look how lifelike it becomes. And this is a result. This is a black and white photo that I've painted now. There's very little paint on this, but I've used colored pencil. And I've used about eight or ten different flesh tones, light and dark, to get this lifelike impression. So this one's still in process. This will take another hour or two to finish. But you can see getting to that, that point is, is pretty easy. Uh, you're, you're coating it and then you're just coloring. And those of you that have ever worked with uh, colored pencil probably didn't have a great experience. That's just my guess. Uh, because colored pencil has to have a surface to bite for it to get rich. I don't know if any of you have ever looked at art magazines and seen ads for colored pencils where the, the artwork they're featuring looks like a painting. You know, like, it's not colored pencil, no way. You know, what do they do? What do they add to it? What do they have, you know, you really don't have to add much. You just have to have a good bite for the colored pencil to work. I think I can show you a really good example of that. Oh, here's another one, still in the gallery. This one I just did last week and I'm so tickled with. This one was a photo that was kind of blurry. You remember the original one and it was black and white. So uh, I had fun working on it. I had created a new background. I worked on his hair, made it feel like it was held back by the tiara thing. and. Had a great time with the coat, which has got a little floral design on it. Anyway, I love this. And here's another example. I found this discount frame at a uh, uh, thrift store in Myrtle Beach, and it's exquisite. It's all carved wood and stuff. So there's another one. Getting back to the process. All right, we can use this one, which is still in process. So this has the coating on. Hear that? So it's 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 like very fine sandpaper. Now I'm going to use this orange only because I know this is where you have to be brave, artists. 
you can change anything. So what you do, you're not bound to. So this is something that I used to deal with, with my students. You need to be willing to reach for the next level on the ladder, even if you're sacrificing something that you're very attached to. That's one of the most important things about art. So my students, when I taught, had to be schooled in preciousness. But preciousness in art has a different term than it does to us Baba lovers. Preciousness is the inability to go beyond where one is because one thinks it's so special. Uh, the inability to, oh, I could never sell that painting. It's like my best ever. That's a sense of preciousness. For us, the preciousness is in reproducing an image of Baba that speaks to us or that I can give to a friend and just see that recognition in their eyes. That's the best. So our preciousness has to do with the original photo. It has to do with how carefully we're pulling it out. Most photos of Baba, nearly all of them, have multiple copies out there online, uh, in publications. So when you go after a photo like this, you remember that if it was damaged or if it was then, by the way, I do want to mention this one thing. One should never take a precious photo of Baba and do this too until one makes a copy of it or talks to an archivist because what we're doing is not archival work particularly. We're just doing fine artwork with Baba's photo. So let me just show you, this is just a, a standard uh, barrel Prismacolor pencil. And you think, oh, I'm not gonna do, be able to do much. Watch just a highlight of Baba's hair. Just a little orange. I don't know if you can see that clearly. But see how I'm being kind of random and like, oh, you're gonna mess it up. It's so easy to fix. You can rub it with your finger. You can rub it with a Q-tip. You can remove any marks with alcohol, okay? At, the acrylic will not be affected by the alcohol, rubbing alcohol, but it'll take the colored pencil off. So if you make a mistake, that's how you erase it. It's just like a liquid eraser. Uh, another thing is the alcohol will also soften paint marker and take paint marker off the image, which is one of the next materials we're going to talk about. Do we need to take a break, ask some questions? Claire, are you there? Hi, I'm here. Hi. Anybody want to ask any questions so far? No, okay. I'm going to go steam ahead. And if they come up, I'll hear them. So I did want to mention this one aspect. Uh, I have a, I can't really move this thing without boogering it all up, but my studio is full of picture frames. And this was the result of when I moved to Hawaii in uh, about 2003, I um, became a picture framer because it was some, some work I could do and it Baba just allowed me to excel in it and uh, make good money, which I never thought I'd do in, in Hawaii. Uh, but I learned a lot about picture framing, but I also learned the value of already made frames that are the right quality. These days, as you'll notice in any thrift store, most uh, condo art is framed in plastic that looks like wood. So you've got to be really careful not to get that crap. It's just horrible. It's not really re re reparable. Whereas some of the frames and things I get are totally repairable with wood putty and paint and things like that. And I'm, I'm looking for the more classical look of paintings because I know the Mondali and most Baba lovers I've spoken to prefer a gold frame or some gold in a frame for Baba but also a quiet frame like this. I told you that I sometimes choose the frame before I finish the work and this one just cried out for it because it had this wonderful gray and a kind of a, a mauve trim. I mean not mauve, a, a kind of a, a neutral creamy trim just seemed to go real well with it. Uh, 
while I've got this up here, this would be a good opportunity for me to show you how I would continue on this, which you can see the, the marks of the, of the color pencil. Notice how, unlike many paintings, myself, I'm, a, I'm a, as bad as anyone, tends to, to shortchange the number of colors they use in Baba's face. When you're working with, with color pencil, you can be pretty free to, to try other colors in the shadows or in the defining parts of Baba's face. Uh, because it's easy to remove, it does, it's not messy like oil paints and it's not permanent like acrylic. Uh, so what I'm gonna do here, I think that I need to bring some of the Bob, some of the highlights out of Baba's face. So on the nose, on the eyebrow. So I've chosen a, a pink. You might say, you know, some, some of these uh, um, zooms go into where the artist goes into the exact colors that they use to reproduce something. I'm not that kind of person at all. I have mountains of colored pencils and I have mountains of paint markers. And I just experiment every time. Uh, if I need a light pink, I will choose two or three light pinks, even going into a yellow, uh, to try and get these highlights on Bob's face. Now I'm gonna hope I can do this so you can see it. Well, this is just one I chose because it's at a, a middle to, to done state. The background, by the way, was primarily painted with paint. You can see up in this area, it's still almost the gray of the photograph. And if you look, if you were to look carefully, you can actually see the screen of the printing where it was from an old poster. But here for me, I've taken it and taken this old poster and made it worthy of my, of my wall and my house. Now I may go in and get Baba to look at me, but and this is a great photo because he was he was laughing at somebody that some, something that somebody said off the side. So I'm probably not going to mess with his eyes that much. But I've got a light pink. Let me just see if it's going to work. Oh yes, can you see that? A little bit brighter there. Yeah, you can see it there. See it? It's a little lighter there. So you can see how subtle it is. So you know how Baba had, in the accidents had a, a few scars on his forehead, so you can kind of play around with that. Notice it's so subtle. Now I could go in with white. Here on the, I need to make his, his nose has gotten a little bit dark, so I'm gonna enhance it with this bright white. It's not really a white, it's sort of a pinkish white. It's very light. Pick up on the cheeks. And all this comes from, obviously you uh, not having spent a lifetime painting Baba, most likely. Um, we'll need to use another, sample a good copy of the photo so you can see oh there's a little highlight because a lot of times you'll you get so much paint and color on here that you can't really tell uh, what's the original photo and what you painted i'm looking at it in the picture and i notice there's a nice highlight here but this side doesn't have it so i'm actually doing this remote so all i'm going to do is just add this this makes probably squint the eyes shine a little it's a little darker under his eyes so this is the part that is so much fun. When you, when you start to see your Baba coming out, you start to see him come alive, especially the ones like this where he's looking at you. Sometimes I just get overcome and can't finish working that night. I'm always excited to come out and see what happened the night before. <clears throat> <clears throat> So here's a, this is white, and I, I get extras of these because I can take any color and go over it with a thin coating of the white, and then I can rub it with a burnisher. A burnisher is just simply a piece of rolled up cardboard, uh, which allows you to blend a, 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 a oh, here's one. So it's just a piece of rolled up cardboard that allows you to blend if I get two See, I think this line in Baba's nose is a little hard, so I'm just going to soften all that. You see that change? It's not quite as hard of a line here. It's the same. I'm just going to toe that down a little in here. See, so it's like, it's a blender. It's a blending stump. 
Now I'm going to go back in and I'm going to add a little highlight to Bob's nose, which is not coming quite as far forward as I would like. I'm trying to figure out where the light came from in the photo, original photo. It came pretty much from up above. So I'm adding a white on top of that thing I did in pink. And I'm also adding light up here to get the reflection of the light on Baba's forehead. And then into the nose. A little reflection on the nostrils. You see the difference? It's starting to come together. See how it's a little more nicer than when we started? Notice this line here needs a little work. So I soften it. it. You know, I'm not really looking at it. I'm looking at you. But you do enough of this and you, you become very natural with the colored pencils so you're not afraid of them. Most tools, paint tools, if you're not careful, they'll mess up your painting quickly. Uh, I've, I've found that all my life, and especially in teaching. Uh, when you put a glob of paint on there, if you've not really considered it, it may over, overtake your work. So this color pencil technique, the bad thing about color pencils is they always looked wimpy when you did them earlier in life, right? This is the opposite. The wimpiness is working for you on top of other richer colors, okay? Some more things to show you. How are we doing on time? Oh, um, oh yeah. Some reasons to do what I do. Okay, I have a. Uh, as most of us, as most of Bible lovers that are that are attending this are, have. We have lots of precious <clears throat> photos and uh, uh, posters, flyers. This is a great thing to do with them rather than burn them in the dooney. Um, it's very simple to take just, to, you know, let's take something like the universal message. This is a very special photograph for me in the universal message. There was a large copy of the photo that was used to Baba in the World's Fair, 1962-55. And it's the picture in the Universal Message. Baba has a simple white side, of no background, just looking directly into the camera. When I was 17 years old and I had gone on my first trip to the center, uh, naive, uh, as we all are, we, I went to a talk by either Kitty or Elizabeth or Jane. I'm not sure which one. It was long time ago. But what struck me was I, I wasn't into the talks that much. Uh, there were stories of somebody that I hadn't really found. And I was sitting in the library, Sirocha Library. I, I'm not sure if it was Kitty or Elizabeth that was, was talking. Could have been both of them. And I kept looking at the photograph from the World's Fair that's on, that was on the wall, that one that's in the Universal Message. That's the original one that they used in the Universal Message. So it came alive. And I had never in my life had a photograph come alive. I'm 17 years old. And not alive, like, in color, but it just, like, I suddenly realized that who Bob was, that he could come through this painting and look right into me and it shook me to my core. And I only remembered that story pretty recently because I found an old beat up copy of that photograph and I turned it into a painting. And I realized how special that, that photograph was. Anyway, this is a good example uh, of how one can take something that's meant something to you your whole life and give it a little extra juice. One thing I did want to point out, it's very important, and the folks at, with the archive wanted me to tell you, don't ever work on something that's precious or maybe precious. Like I said, make a reproduction of it. Use something that is disposable. Uh, really, old posters, old flyers, anything like that is a great place to start. Not only that, I think I have something interesting to show you. So I had a, I have 
he's a large Baba family. One of my good friends is Al Grasso, who does the uh, the Baba buttons in Little Boots. And we've had a, I may have mentioned that he, that he gives me buttons and things that are unacceptable. This is a, a Baba button that was from a painting by, I believe it's Pam Rubenstein out in California. Well, what happened, because this happens frequently with buttons, is the image got extremely faded. And the only thing that was left when Al gave me this button was the blue, this blue that you see right in here. So Baba's hair was blue, the background was blue, everything was blue. It was, it was okay, but it just didn't make it. So I went into it and started using marker and colored pencil after I had primed it with that material that I showed you. Now I can paint on it now. And so this was uh, important thing here is that it's not my art, but it is now. <laughs> the paint, the, the, the button wasn't very nice. It didn't look good. No one probably would have liked to wear it. Uh, Pam, I'm sure I didn't ask her or anything, but bringing Baba to life in full color, I never, I never hesitate. If it's something that I can improve and make it look more like Baba or have a richness to it, I'm down with it. Okay. Uh, now, this is one I wanted to show you. This is a fairly recent one, a large one that I just did from scratch. So this is not from a photo. And what I do is I, I use photographs to launch myself into this. And then I play with, uh, let me get a good picture of this. I play with markers. Uh, paint markers and because they go on very crisp edged and the colored pencil I still have to coat whereas the paint markers work pretty well. did want to show you I have a wonderful story I did an original uh, original bottle bottle button like this one here but I, it was from the 1932 silhouette of Bobo or similar to the one that's in Baba's house in Myrtle Beach and I was, I got it before Artie. I was staying in India. I got it before Artie and I knew what to do to finish this Baba book. And that was small, it was a little smaller than this one. And Artie's getting close. It's still 20 minutes, 30 minutes. And I oh, finished it up. Oh, it's so sweet. I was so proud. <laughs> and I, I put it on my shirt and I went down to the Samadhi. And uh, yes, I'm going to show you the paint markers in just a second. And Jal, Jal Dastor came up to me and said, uh, oh, I like that, that Baba button. I'll trade you this one for it. And when this is a photograph that he had just, as the trust, uh, head of the trust, he had these printed up. And he was wearing it. And he took his off and he says, I'll give you this one for yours. In my ego, this was the only 1980, 2018, I think it was. <laughs> I said, are you kidding all the work I put into this. And it didn't take me but about 30 seconds as Jaw walked away for me to realize the stupidity of my reply. Here's here's a someone, the new Baba that's given me so much in terms of Baba. And I wasn't gonna, I should have just given him the, the button, which I have done so many times. I've given hand painted Baba lovers, thing as I had already given him a button. I guess I was thinking, oh, you've already got one, you know. Anyway, I immediately, so when I realized that he was going to offer me his for this one, I just gave it to him. And he loved it. He smiled really big. But Bob had told me that's what I needed to do. One more. Uh, I'm going to show you paint markers here in a second. I've got a huge collection. And they're great for the final points on things like this. Notice the, let's see if I can get some good light. You can see that. See that. The marks on Baba's face, they're very small. Here's some of my finger to give you an idea. So these fine tip paint markers that I use are great because they have a very fine tip and they come out totally opaque. Now, what I've done in the last year or two since I've fallen in love with paint markers, some of you may remember that I did a paint marker workshop at the Southeast Gathering because I came, became so enthralled with how one could decorate Baba buttons, could decorate frames, could, could uh, uh, do paintings with, with these paint markers. So I have uh, collected hundreds. And luckily, 
on Amazon, especially, there are all kinds of Chinese companies producing these things at a very good, good rate. The way to, to get them inexpensively is to buy the sets. Unfortunately, in the sets, there's colors that you may not use, but you get a good selection. So this is culled down from about three different sets. I want to just show you guys this. Oh, that's coming across real good in color. These are my portrait ones. So you can see there's every kind of fleshy pink and there's dark browns and reds and some golds and some tans and whites and pale yellows. So this is a set that I specifically put together for Baba Buttons, okay? And so you don't really need to know any of this kind of stuff. There are a number of excellent companies out there. The best company, the most expensive, is called Posca, P-O-S-C-A. And they make at least four different sizes of every color. And they make a huge range of colors. Number one, very expensive Japanese uh, materials. They do last a lot longer than the others, but they are a, there's a little sticker shock associated with them. Uh, so it's good to have a set of them because they're great for the larger sizes. I can fill in a, a big area of color. I can actually write on glass. I can write on my car window with them. They're that opaque uh, and they're broad tipped. These on the other hand that I'm using for the buttons are quite small. You can see, there it is. And as long as I use it delicately, I can actually use it on this. And I know you guys are saying, oh, this is brazen. It's something you've not even used it on. You have control on this. Remember, folks, you can go forward. You can go back. It's not like done, okay, until you say it. So now I'm using this, and I test it. Make sure it's flowing well. And this is a bright little pink. It should be brighter. Yes, you can see that it's brighter than the color pencil. Now you might say, oh, what about, do these materials work together? Yes, yes. The paint markers will pretty much go over it now if it's too linear. I'm just gonna brush it down lightly with my finger. And then let's see, I'm doing this upside down. That's a little challenging. I've often noticed that the light picks up on this little bit of skin. Sorry about that. Right there, see where I just did that? Right there. So that's part of Baba's smile wrinkles, which are important, obviously. Every part of Baba's, I hope this bee doesn't sting me. Got a yellow jacket here, you don't see that? <laughs> you want this yellow jacket? <sighs> anyway, uh, now that's pink. One of the things that when you get going and you'll notice, oh, I'm having so much fun, like a, is you, you gotta remember that you've got lots of colors, so even though something's working real good like this color is, look how it brought Baba's nose up. And I can get right in here in the in between, make sure it's flowing well. See, it got a drop on my hand. You see how opaque it is there on my thumb? So you do have to be careful not to, to get carried away with the opacity of it. But you can go over it with the colored pencil. Now, Baba's eye here is a little bit dark. Notice the whites of his eye are a little just gonna hit it a touch, just a touch, almost like a paintbrush. And Baba's eyes got brighter that fast. So the important thing, folks, I really hope you try this. It's not that special. I'm not, this is not something that I am a master of or anything. It's just time spent rendering Baba's face has turned into finding the best materials because I have an endless supply of imagery. There's so many wonderful photographs of Baba. Uh, this, is, this is my meditation. I sometimes will spend three or four hours at night sometimes. I'll just get going and everything that comes to hand wants to be treated this way. I'll go through, it's almost dreadful for me to go through boxes of Baba photos and, and memorabilia because I'll find, but oh, I know what I could do with this. I could add this and I can add in this. One more little thing before we ask any more questions. Um, the paint markers are a big new fad, okay? So they're easy to find and easy to purchase. You can even go so far as to go to a place like a, um, a 
Cheap Joe's. There's one in Nashville. And I'm sure there's a, a Hobby Lobby in Myrtle Beach. Um, these places will have a good selection of paint markers. Uh, they're not as cheap as they are on Amazon, of course. But sometimes you'll have an opportunity to try them. Uh, and I think you're going to really like them. Not to mention, uh, because of their opacity, you can literally paint an image of Baba or a figure of Baba or a mastery and servitude or a religious symbol on top of anything you choose. Your car, your shirt, your hand. I mean, uh, back, in the, back in the 80s, I did a portrait of Baba on Adrian Shamazan's head in, in, in these markers and things. And, and they, uh, she said people at Amritya were doing darshan to her hands. That was my first meeting with Adrian. That's kind of a fun story. But um, you can, I'm, I'm looking at this from where I started when I first showed you guys. I don't know if you can see the details, the tiny bit that I've done to it, like in the nose. I could move some of that white over and make it a little broader on the nose, but Notice how the hair has just gotten started, okay? And so you can see some dark marks in the hair and you can see the photo of the uh, wiry gray hair flowing around in the background. This is something that's perfect for the paint markers. So all one does is select a good light gray and then you can, I can show you this too. Finally. Sorry about that. So I have a massive thing on the wall that has all the colors of these are sticking out. So here's a gray one, very pale, warm gray, kind of a French gray, if you can see that color. The colors are pretty good on the caps of. By the way, these, uh, the ones, these uh, Chinese sets, these end up getting down to around 35 cents a piece, these uh, markers. So when they're new, Get out of here, yellow jacket. <laughs> Baba, don't sting me. Here's a, this is the top of my thing. I just wanted to show you how fine it, it can be. Whoops. See that fine line? That is opaque, okay, on black. See that? Very fine and permanent. So when I'm doing Baba's hair, this is, I, I go with a fairly new light gray. And here's this. And one of the things that's missing is those delicate differentiations of hairs. So, so I'm going to do a little, I hope this is coming across. It's really hard to see, I know, but I'm doing individual hairs and I'm also letting them flow out into the background. So they dissolve somewhat dissolve the barrier between Baba and the background. That's very important in art that it's Baba's not a stark cartoon figure against the background. He's part of all of it. So I don't know if you can see, but here's a good thing. You can see those like there, those little lines. So now Baba's hair in this area you can see is doing a lot better than it is over here. Okay. So this is just a thin and you can see, it's just going great right over the paint and everything, just a crisp little line. So this is the stuff that you couldn't really do unless you were a really good painter before. But these markers literally will come out with a fine little needle line that's permanent. So you can work right on top here. You might be able to see a little better on the, on the mustache. Let's uh, give a few wild hairs. Now, let's say it's got a little carried away. Just touch it before it dries, calms it right down. See that? Okay, on the other side now. Here, put a few stray ones in the eyebrows. Now, remember you're using gray. So it's pretty safe to do other things on here, but uh, the more you keep in mind, you want to use the color that you need. Notice, see how this is, seeing those gray hairs come wide there. 
This piece right here is a little too blue. Y'all see that right there? So I'm. This is what I'm going through when I'm when I'm I'm evaluating as I go, and I'm adding and subtracting. One more hint, and I think we could open it up for a few more questions. Is you'll notice the chaos in this studio of having a good twenty or thirty bobble pieces going on at once. I found this to be extremely productive. This one, by the way, is by, by hand, just from looking at a photograph. And then I used some of my uh, abstract background stuff and I just painted the baba over it. So it's it's almost done now. Uh, I gotta work on it a little bit more, but it's got great little texture. And this is all paint mark. I don't know how well you can see all the little, the little paint mark there and stuff. So, um, this is a, an example of something that you may have been, may have in a drawer. This was a, uh, a reproduction of a scratch board by my father, Bill Stevens. Um, and he and my mom put out these cards. So basically what you would, and the, these were, Part of my legacy. <laughs> I've got lots of my dad's stuff. So this is what you got in the mail, okay? And it's a scratch board reproduction on black. This kind of thing is ideal for going after with uh, the color pencils and the markers, because not only is it pretty accurate to Bob, um, but you can add color, you can add fine lines, you can add background with the color pencils or with the markers. So one of the things I was hoping to do with this thing today was inspire you to look outside the box. There's so many things that we have. I know for me, over 50 years of Baba, I have so much stuff that is precious to me, but not so precious that it's hanging on my wall or is in the case, you know, with Baba Sandra. I just have boxes of this stuff. And part of it is my profession. I, I was a painter. I love photographs. I'm friends with Hermes. But every time I tell this story about what I'm doing these days, I just got back from Little Beach Day yesterday. People say, oh, I got a big box of that stuff. Do you want it? <laughs> so you can see I'm not asking you because there's just too much out there. All of us that have, had, have been with Baba for years have piles of this wonderful stuff. And I'm trying to encourage you to step outside the box and go through those things. And the ones that speak to you, the Baba images that speak to you, but there's, it, you probably wouldn't hang it on your wall because it's out of focus. It's too light. It's got a tear in one corner. This is the stuff. This is the fodder for this process. Uh, by the way, here's that one I started with. It dries very fast. Oh, I did want to mention those of you that are in Myrtle Beach have a little different situation. It did rain here a little last night, but we had a couple of weeks without rain. And generally our humidity is a lot lower than Myrtle Beach. If you're doing these processes in Myrtle Beach, you really need a fan or you really need some sun to dry the stages between. What happens if you get over anxious? This I just coded. Now look at that. That's got a, listen, do you hear that? It's like sandpaper. It's like 600 grit sandpaper. So now I can start right away. We'll give you some, just a second with colorizing this. Okay. Um, what I was going to say about Myrtle Beach is, is when I painted there, over the years I've done that many times, especially when I've gotten to stay on the center. It's a wonderful place to set up. Twin A is a perfect cabin for it. Lagoon, I mean, Lantern is great. Uh, you know, if you've got a cabin where you can do it, it's kind of tough to do it in the refectory because everybody wants to see what you're doing. Same with the kitchen. But anyway, uh, painting in Myrtle Beach with acrylics is completely different than anywhere I've ever been. I literally would paint a painting 
and I come back and it was literally still wet in the morning. And that's unheard of with acrylics. When I paint with acrylics like this stuff moments ago, it's dry. Uh, partly because I put it in front of a fan, partly because it's not real thick on here. But if you live in a dry place, you may want to mist everything literally with a little water mister. These are alcohol, but these work great for um, misting with water, keep the, the surface moist. Generally, the process I do is in stages. So I want them good and dry between the stages. Because now let's say I go into this. Here we have a nice, safe, uh, warm, brownish tone. I just want to see how it's going to work. It's a little orange, but I'm going to use a middle area. And probably I ought to start on Bob's hand to be a little safer. Look at, you see the tiny bit of color? I just put there on the chin. I don't know if you can or not. It can be so subtle. Watch this. This is just barely touching Baba. And because of this coarseness, look how suddenly the warmth is coming out of it. And you, you don't even see any of the color pencil, but it's coming alive. See how natural that looks already? So, this was the Kamali coat, and good luck getting the color of that one right. The Kamali coat, this is just my own theory. I swear it looks different every photograph I've ever seen. I guess because Bobby used more for so many years. But at this point, I think this is about, Hermes didn't write a date, but I had, I had to guess it's 39, 40. Anyway, the Kamali coat, as you know, in the later years, it was all patched up. At this point, you can just see a few buttons that have changed. And he wore the coat over his Sadra and shirts, whatever are there. And here's a, the white of his Sadra Jama bottoms there. So let me just add a little more color so you can get a little more excited. And this time, I'm going to go with a little bit more of a pink. You notice that that has a little orangish feel. So now, I hope y'all can see this well. I've got this set up so that this is a little pink. Notice I can go right back over those orange shades. Notice the subtle, subtle let's see if I can get a good picture, coloration of the pink going right over that. Brown. And I'm, not, I'm th this is facing away from me. I could, I can press down more and get a good, rich color. With this pink, it would have to be on the lip or it would have to be on the cheek, or it have to be right next to the eye. So I often use this pink for details in Baba's uh, pink coat, but on the face, I have to be a little more careful. On the face, the areas that I want this are on the lip right here, just a little. Don't get carried away. I'm doing this upside down, so I can screw it up. Now you're going, how, how can you do this? This is a special picture of Baba. Remember one more time say it. I'm not ruining it. There are more. It is precious because of who it is. And it's precious because it belongs to me. And he's given it to me. But it's been sitting in a file. And next week, it's going to be in a picture frame. And it's going to be, oh, God, what a beautiful picture of Baba. As wonderful as these wonderful black and whites are, trust me, I cherish them. So the ability to bring them alive give them this color, this, this color has been just real eye-opening, enough that I wanted to, to share it with, with Bible lovers. And I'm still going to, I'm going to do this, probably a workshop very similar to this at the Southeast Gathering this year. Um, it's, it's quite portable, this process, as, as you can imagine. And uh, it's really meant a lot to me to, to, to get these images with this. Here's another one. This was one of the first ones. I've always loved this image of Bala, but it got really damaged. Um, it had, a, it had a, a, a fold in it, and the size, oops, sorry about that. The size from here to here was a standard frame size, but I needed it to be this wide. So can you see I joined a piece of paper to this photograph? You can see the line up. And you're going, how in the world? Well, what I did was I had, I mounted it, this photograph, which is a 
incredible photograph of Baba. Uh, what's the name of this river? Uh, anyway, I'm not going to go there. Uh, the Dabri, I think. Anyway, this is a piece that I added. And so I had to create this paint, this photograph, and this painting on this piece of paper that I added. And you can see I didn't, I'm not quite finished. So that's what's happening with some of these lines. I'm trying to blend that line where it separates. This is working real good right here. I can just do a little more here and you can hardly see it in the sky. But obviously I had so much fun bringing this one because it's such a dramatic and to me romantic photograph of Bobby dipping his hands in the water. And so another thing you can do is photo because of the motion in the original photo, the water looks like it should in a photograph. It's all blurred and everything. So you can have a little fun when you're doing a painting with the water dripping off. You can even put little uh, uh, places where the, the droplets are hitting the water down here. So here we are with this pink that we were using a second ago. This baba is a little bit orange, a little bit brown. So I'm just gonna take a hint, just a hint on the lip and humanize it just a little bit, warm it up. Not, not so much humanize it, but the pink is amazing. Even if you think the brown looks great, the pink adds just a humanization, just a little. You can't tell much difference, but I'm seeing it here close up. I'm, I'm seeing a big difference. All right, let's see what else we got over here. Oh, here's a little pile. You can see I am fairly obsessive about paintings. Uh, anybody wants to flash a question on the screen? Uh, I, that was the where I went with the uh, markers a minute ago. Feel free. This is an old um, photo that I did. I had a little sketch pad. I think I was at the center. And I was practicing drawing Baba from scratch without using a photograph at all. And I did this little page of him. I did a little landscape on the other side. I was working on. But I never, I, I'm bad to never throw things like this away even though it may be incomplete. I realized with this process, the other day when I was going through my notepads, oh, all I have to do is coat this with that material and I can have some fun with this. I can add color easily and maybe one or two of these will be worthy of cutting out and putting on a button or something. <laughs> Here's something for y'all in stages. This is an early one. Some of you have seen this. What I do here is, uh, uh, obviously Quaker Oats. The only one I can get a good flat copy of is the one they have at Costco, which is two and a half, three pounds. I don't know. It's three, maybe four pounds. And it has a good unblemished Quaker Oats guy on it. You can see I've already taken the hair and changed it here. You can see I'm just started on the nose, elongating the nose. I've made Quaker Oats guys hair. I leave the hat usually. I adjust the eyebrows. Okay. And here's Another one, and you can see the top of the box is bent here. So these are these are kind of freebies uh, I give away or I send to people that they're, they're delighted by them. Uh, it's quite funny. Now, here's what I've done. You can see I'm messing with the type. This says Quaker Oats, obviously, and I'm taking the, the, the Q and I'm masking it out and I'm turning it into Waker and getting rid of the oats. So, and you can see I've started to do that here. And the Baba in this is getting pretty close. You can see his hair, his eyes are looking pretty much like Baba's. So this just needs a little bit of adjustment. Here's another one that I have not done the type two, but you can see this one is even closer to looking like Baba. And this is all with marker and that material that I paint on here, the, the, the ground. Here's a, this painting, this photograph of Baba I found, um, I don't even know where it came from or where it is, but it's obviously 40s. Uh, it's at some type of uh, uh, probably architect, uh, 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 old temple. <laughs> I was gonna say archeological site, but <clears throat> there was some excavation going on in the photograph. And I had to study the photograph a long time to see what this actually was. And Baba's sitting on some steps here, obviously. And there's some excavation going on on the side. 
<clears throat> I think I did a really nice job with the background, the, the landscape background on this. But the photograph that I was working with was uh, pretty rough. Uh, that's why you don't recognize this photograph. It's a little out of focus and a little rough. Uh, but I'm having some issues with the coat, but I'm getting there, as you can see. Uh, I like the, the, the brightness of, this, of the sajo, the pajama bottoms. Baba's feet are coming along nicely in the sandals. He's holding his alphabet board at an angle where I'm not sure what I can do with it, except leave it to your imagination. And I haven't done that much on his face. I've got basic structure in his face. Now I just need to crisp it up. Uh, the hair is pretty good. I just need to make it a little wavy, and then this one will be done. And this is like an 8 by 10 Here's a, a small one. This is a good example of a rescue. Here's a picture of Baba. You can see, I don't know if you can see, see that line there, you can see it real well. This, like an idiot, I cut through something with an exact and knife and cut the photo of Baba. I was mortified. I kept it, <laughs> it was years ago. And not because I thought I could do this, but I did it because I can still see Baba. I can use it for my painting, even if it has a cut down. So it wasn't cut all the way through. So then I came across it the other day. I mounted it onto this piece of foam core and I started painting. And I thought that perhaps, see at this angle, you can't really see the cut very much at that angle. So I'm hoping that with a little sanding and a little gentle work, I can turn this into a nice photo of Bob. Here's an old photo from the 70s, uh, a drawing of Bob, not a photo. This is a drawing of Baba that I did on my trip to India, I believe, one of my trips to India. It came out really nice. I, 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 I was pleased because it was all just freehand. Well, I came across it the other day and it's just sitting in a folder because it's not dynamic enough to, to frame. And so I decided I'm gonna paint it. So I painted in this, this creamy iridescent pinkish background. And now I'm gonna go in and make uh, Baba's flesh lifelike. And, paint the pillows a little bit. So this has that material on it, made it scratching. So it's just not like sandpaper. I don't think you can, you can uh, do your nails with it, but it's definitely got a, a grit to it, which allows it to take color pencil, marker, crayon, pastels. And Here's another one I just started, a small one. The smaller they are, actually, the more difficult they are because you really have to um, use more markers and keep your color pencils quite sharp. Uh, so this is one that I started to be in danger of losing. It was faded, a faded image of Baba. One I also didn't like that much when I was young, but now I absolutely love this image of Baba. And I get to work on the hands. I get to get the place, the, the, the eyes are looking right at you. So this is a blast. And you can see I'm about halfway done. I painted out the figures in the background, put blue sky, uh, worked on the pink coat. There's some parts I didn't work on at all, like this piece of a blanket, uh, but I've got the, uh, uh, the basics are there. Going back for those that, that you uh, that have joined late, I am coating the photographs with a material that is called pastel ground. Okay, it's not it's similar to gesso in that it has a little bit of tooth, but it has much more tooth than gesso, and it's clear. Okay, so when you gesso something, you painted it white, or if you use black gesso, you painted it black. I can't do that on these photographs. I needed something clear that would be gritty. What brand do you like? Uh, well, that stuff I mixed myself, actually. Um, you can get it from gold. Wait, you're breaking up. Uh, found out how to make it. So oh, I'm sorry. My my computer's getting low. I'm off near the end thing. Me oh. now? Yeah, better. Hello? Oh. Okay. Uh, Golden makes a good one if you want a quick fix on that. Uh, it's marble dust and, and or pumice dust mixed with acrylic medium. It gives you a 
sand theology. Okay. Here's another one that's only about half done. I painted in Bob's shirt, Bob's coat, and I painted in the flesh tones on the hand and the and now I've luckily so this series of is really nice because there's not figures behind Bob that have to be painted out, just some subtle shadows. Here's one of my very favorites of Baba, and I've all, always enjoyed painting out the background and putting in uh, uh, North Carolina landscapes. Sorry. And this one's about halfway. Come again. Uh, this one's about halfway done. I need to work a little more on the Sadra and get the flesh tones a little more human and do a little uh, uh, real realistic uh, mountain scene behind it. Let's see. Can I ask you a question? Please go ahead. I, I'm, I'm, I may be, uh, I've got about 10% of my juice left on my computer. I should plug it in. Okay. Um, I scan a lot of pictures, photos, um, and my lap, my computer, and I'm using inkjet paper because do you, do you scan stuff that doesn't clog up? Because any good paper you can't do. So I've been like playing around after I, make a painting and then I go back and work on it then you that ground stuff would be really good right absolutely yeah. you need yeah. anything that comes out of a printer needs to be prepared for painting so that's what I have to work on yeah because the paper that that inkjet paper is garbage so as soon as you put right. this ground on it you've like uh created a seal that is no longer acidic this this mm -hmm. pastel ground creates a seal between any acidic like even newspaper you could paint on and it's not going to continue to go yellow and brittle well that's a really a good good thing to it know. is a very good thing yeah. because i have plenty of older pieces that are so fragile from the acidity of the paper they've been framed wrong uh the ladies at the at the mac can really tell you some horror stories about things that have been done on acidic paper that just they, they're brittle they just fall apart so I've been very conscious of that, having been a picture framer in uh, Hawaii for 12 years about archival materials, making sure these paintings last as long as they can. I've also stopped mounting pretty much, I'm moving that way on paper products. No foam core, no uh, 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 mount board, and no heavy cardboard because these things are all paper-based and will tend to warp. These days I am using gator board which gator is board? a gator board yes which is a foam board product that is easily two or three times as strong as foam board i am literally trying to bend this for you it's not it looks like foam core but it is very rugged and this is only three eight three sixteenths when you get into larger sizes of this i'm hoping to do some display panels for the mac on this material which is pretty much indestructible and it's very lightweight. Look at this. I mean, it's Is like it archival? Is it archival? When you seal it with the material, it becomes archival. Yes. Can you yeah. send a copy of the formula that you use to make the ground? Sure. Email it sure. Or, yeah. Sure. Yeah. Um, you can you can email me at Roger B. Stevens. Wait, hold on. R R O G E R B. Mm -hmm. Stevens. Stevens, S S T E P H E N S. Oh wait, hold on, I gotta redo that. <laughs> okay. Roger B. Stevens at Yahoo. Oh, okay. Well, I'm glad I tuned in. And also, if you're on Facebook, you can contact me through Messenger easily. Uh, I don't Facebook like friends. Facebook. <laughs> well, I know, but anybody that's a bobble lover, I add to my. I don't do anybody, but I do bobble lovers. Um. Well, I'm about I have lots that. more stories. If y'all feel free to ask any questions you want. Um, I don't know how much time we have left. I've stopped wearing my wristwatch on the advice of my chiropractor in Myrtle Beach. Right um, there? Are you Roger living in Myrtle? Are you living in Myrtle Beach? No, I have a condo there, and I do a lot of I I, I um <clears throat> I do a lot of artwork when I'm there. In fact, right now I've completely redecorated my condo, which is at Ocean Creek next to the center. It's completely full of Baba painting. We're talking 50 Baba paintings. Mm -hmm. And a lot of them are small. I do real, you can see a lot of this work is quite small, but it's it's blissful for me now. I don't have to worry about who rents my condo anymore. <laughs> They're going to get um, it. <laughs> Roger, well, I'm renting a condo this winter at Land's End Resort. 
December oh, through yeah. May. So Roger, I'll it into you. Yeah. Roger, there's an earlier question that was uh, does alcohol erase the paint markers? Uh yes, somewhat. Yes. Uh, it races them a lot worse when they're fresh. You can definitely dissolve off the paint markers immediately with alcohol, if that's the, the reason for asking that. The so I heard you use alcohol. Why are you using the alcohol to clear the... To, to erase. I'm using okay. a colored pencil for a lot of the work. You can see the oh, strokes okay. of it. And so if I want to blend the colored pencil, or if I want to remove some colored pencil, I take a Q-tip, or a, a clean rag and remove it with 70% uh, alcohol. It works like mm -hmm. a liquid eraser. Now, it also works for the paint markers, but it doesn't work as effectively because the color pencil work is subtle anyway. So when you remove it, it's subtle also. The paint markers should be the last step of the process. Uh-oh, I think you lost me. No. No, we okay, didn't. Okay, I'm, I'm, I'm on real low power now. Uh, how's our time, Claire? Uh, we're doing good. How much more time? I need to plug in my computer if y'all give me a second. Yeah, go do that. Yeah. Yeah, that's fine. Go ahead. Well, my thing just said battery low, too. <laughs> okay. Just so we all know, there's going to be another meeting in about 25 minutes. So. Oh, okay. What's so that we'll, going to be? We'll We'll try and wrap up here soon. Okay. And also to let you know, this will be uh, moved to a uh, Baba Zoom on the Mac Baba Zoom channel. So yes. You can watch it over again from the beginning. Mm -hmm. And I will be sure to have Roger email me um, a list of the materials that he's recommending so that I can put it in the description on the, the YouTube video. Oh, thank you. Uh, thank you, thank you website, very much. Can you put the Mac? I think I have the Mac website because I visited it and I'm, I think I'm on their email now. Yeah. Claire, does Roger um, ever teach on Baba Zoom? This is the first time that we've had him. Uh, but oh I'm my God, he is I'm... so exciting. I, I, I hope, I mean, I, I don't know how to paint, but I am artistic, but I've been working with Baba's uh, pictures from the glow and I just happened to, listen to this and roger is just roger you filled me up with passion and excitement oh um, that's what i wanted if i even got through is there to any one chance person, you can um roger any chance you can teach on baba zoom I, I can do it you know if it's no harder than this i can do it um i just have been resistant to tell you the truth i'm i'm uh not all that Busy. social I, i'm more social i think than i think i am in my mind but you the, main thing I want to do, <laughs> the main thing i want to do is 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 sit here and paint. I'm serious, folks. I'm not just saying that for the Zoom. Uh, so I can easily do this again. And if, if, especially if there's one part of the process that needs further explanation, not to mention the next time I do it, I'll have a whole bunch of new ones. And, and I can also, I, I had hoped to do literally a demo, but I got so excited and showing you examples that I didn't really get to the, the demo part. Now we do know that this was coded. And you can see in the light here, the little bit of color that I added around Baba's mm -hmm. mouth. Yeah. Okay. So remember that when you get to this point, don't freak out. This is the most important thing. And, and this was one of the things that I carried all through my teaching career. People think they ruin things. I can't tell you how many things, times I've heard, oh, I effed this up. Oh, it's, I, I screwed it up. I had to start over. All these kinds of things. And they're just your ego okay you got to remember that we are expecting miracles when we do this it may not happen the first time but when it does trust me when you see baba come out of that photo better than it was you'll be sold you'll be sold it's just so exciting i can't even tell you and it you know it makes it turns these old photos into works of art you know we at the mac we talk about the difference between photos and works of art. Well, I'm blurring that one right now. <laughs> uh, because these photos are, are, for me, are becoming works of art. Uh, and they're only works of art because I feel like 
they're still photos, but I feel like I've been involved in the process. I feel like I've, I've gotten to enrich the photos. It doesn't feel like I'm coloring pictures. I feel like I'm painting a Baba painting with a whole lot of information already provided. <laughs> so that's been, that's been really exciting. I guess you're picking up on that excitement and enthusiasm. Oh, absolutely. Can I absolutely. share something that I just yeah. finished? Absolutely, Roger. Thank you. Can I share something that I just finished in the middle of the night? And sure. I, it's, it's an ongoing thing. Um, let me see if, if I reverse the camera. I don't know. Let me see. Not the way to show it, I think. Yeah. I, oh, okay. Oh, yeah. Uh-huh. Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, these, these techniques are perfect for that kind of work. That's why I'm so glad I tuned in. Oh my what gosh. I, Ooh, okay, so what I, can I, do this. what I did is I photographed it in stages so I wouldn't ruin it. So oh, I had no, no, I, that's great. Yeah, it's I photocopied wonderful. each one, yeah. But the begin so, the end, yeah, it's fun, right? Yeah. I'm glad I things, met you, right? <laughs> yeah. One of the things that um I wanted to do was uh on another session, I actually tried to do this at the Southeast Gathering, and that was to have a session on on collage and photo restoration. And, and it kind of just turned in the same, similar to this. But what I'd like to do is, it's nice that you showed that piece because I do things like that. Uh, here, for example, is a real special way that you can blend that with your most sacred treasures. <laughs> when, I, when I was in Myrtle Beach in night, it was before the pandemic and Betty Grant died. Do y'all remember that? She was a Myrtle Beach resident longtime resident, wrote a Baba book, uh, very special. I had some powerful Baba experiences associated with her, but I ended up bringing a, a lot of her uh, stuff to the, to the Mac as a donation. Anyway, during that process, I had to clean, was helping David and Sally Katz clean out her apartment. And there was just pile, you know how every, you imagine someone doing that at your house. Okay, so you can imagine what it was. I mean, you could tell things that were precious somewhat, but then there would be piles of photographs, snapshots at Mare's Eye and pictures of her with the Monley and this and that. Well, mixed in there, we were going through and trying to decide what things the Mac uh, could use. She had wonderful videotapes and uh, audio tapes. I found a snapshot of Baba. It was a snapshot because I could see that it had not been reproduced professionally. It was a snapshot, this size, little white border. And I couldn't tell. I assumed it was a photograph of a photograph, a snapshot of a photograph. The longer I looked at it, I'd never seen the photograph that it was photographed of. So she was in India a number of times and she may have photographed this photograph but I've never seen it. So I kept that and I cut it out very carefully and I made this Baba bud from it. And this is the kind of thing I want to show you that's possible with this, my process. I simply painted out the photograph, the, the Baba bud, carefully cut out Baba out of that little snapshot, mounted it on here and then cleaned up the edges so that I can wear it without too much funkiness. And to me, it is by far my favorite Baba Bud. So I think it's a very good chance that it may have been a real snapshot of Baba. Because I feel such power from this. I don't recall this photograph. So anyway, that's the kind of thing you can do with these processes. The next time I do one, I'm gonna talk about gluing and mounting and layering of photographs which is, is another part of this process, which allows you to get more unusual. The, the reason I limited this is the results that I'm getting from these straight photographs being turned into color images. is majestic and special without having to mix images of Baba, without having to make up anything, but just striving to capture as much of what I think Baba 
looked like as I can. And to me, some pictures are definitely improved by this process where you read, they, they're humanized or something. They're, they're, they're more accessible. Oh, I didn't mention much about Pondy uh, earlier. I meant to. Pondy was Bob, what they call Baba's artist or Baba's photographer. And he lived in Amanagar. And he, he took many of the, of the really great photographs of Baba. Uh, and he would also produce them in his little shop. And he, they were available the early days uh, in India. Those were the photos that were available were, were from Pondy. He also would take photographs and mount them on um, um, fiberboard, like masonite. Ouch. Some of the stuff that Peter wants, never mind. Uh, <laughs> the panel panels that are like blackboard material. And he would paint oil paintings because that was there was no acrylic in those days. And you've, you've seen some of his large uh, 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 Samadhi photos. And he he does, you know, he had a, a classic way of doing the landscaping and very looks very Indian, you might say. But I recently had a chance to restore one of those for Rabia. She had bought it at the gathering. It had been donated by, by someone, an original oil painting of the Samadhi by Pandi. And because I was good friends with Pandi and he gave me materials and set me on my way in the early days, 1973, I, uh, I knew I could restore because I learned that in Hawaii. So I, I restored this for Robbie. And while I, while I did, I got a really good chance to look at his technique. And it was all oil paint, of course. And um, I realized that from that in my painting, I, we worked very similar, but uh, that I had a lot more education on values, on toning things down and bringing things forward. So he literally gave me my first art supplies. He was the first master painter. He was the first Baba painter. I hadn't even met Lynn I, I don't think maybe I had, but uh, he was very influential and he used uh, thinned out oil paints. They used to call them Marshall photo oils for those, uh, those of you old timers among you may, might remember those. You could actually buy little tiny tubes of oil paint and paint your photographs with that. that this was back at the, in the twenties and thirties and forties in America. Then I got into to uh, working with the acrylics and the acrylics aren't that good on photographs because they're so dominant and they're so solid. You can, they're unworkable once you get them on there. So obviously having a background, a lifetime background, I also knew oil paint. And I always use oil painting for very careful modulation of skin, but I'm such a uh, slash bang rapid fire maniac I preferred acrylic because I could do acrylic painting I could do one a day <laughs> that's the kind of those of you that know me have seen this side of me I can't wait for it to dry that kind of thing so, <laughs> so I got away over the years uh, from oil painting but now I have returned because they give me phenomenal colors in Baba's skin that I didn't have before This is, a, this is a straight one. This is not from a photograph. This is one of my paintings and this is an oil. And I love the way I can just with a flick of the wrist change expression stuff, change the lips and things. Um, so you can see, I, 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 can still, I can paint Bob without painting photographs, but I love the way that he abbreviates the whole process in photographs. I don't have to uh, try to create anything that's not already there. I just have to enhance it. This is one of my uh, one of mine too. This one was before I did photographs. This is one of my paintings, and this is mastery and servitude as all the symbols. But the the technique I'm doing now is not so great on big stuff like this. So I let. I laid out a bunch of stuff and I've been through most of it. Uh, it literally piles up in my studio because I'm my whole life. Here's another uh, confession. I've been a great initiator, but a terrible completer. <laughs> so I end up with piles of artwork everywhere that I started years ago 
And I knew it was a good idea, but I just kind of got other ideas in the meantime. One of the things in interesting since, since I'm carrying on and now I've got some juice on my computer and y'all aren't leaving me here, is I took a, this is a fun thing. Any of you that are, that are doing art projects for stimulation and, and uh, not, not, I mean that by for your own soul recreation. I always had to mention this when I talk to artists because, you know, they want to market things. I don't, I'm not into marketing. These are amazing gifts. And that's all that really matters with our family, right? I mean, who cares about a few dollars? Um, the paintings I have available in Myrtle Beach are like $50 paintings. So it's like, there's no money in this. But what I want to show you is this is a wooden panel. And you can get these, these are coasters. Um, and I, during the pandemic, I wasn't getting out much and I needed, needed something to keep my ideas going. And I, 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 you can see in the background back over there, a baba that's all uh, fall leaves and baba kind of comes out of it. So over my shoulder, I don't know if y'all can see that. But um, I'm always trying to come up with new ways of portraying baba. And obviously I want to be so fluid, fluent, I guess is a better word, in drawing Baba that I can't draw it enough. I cannot, I feel like I can't draw and recall Baba's face enough. I'll know when I have, because he's already popping in faster, but I want him there really fast. And I'm, I'm pretty sure that came from, I was 18 years old and a young man had come to Baba at our house in Miami and he was gung-ho for Baba. He was a little bit younger than me. So he must have been 16, I was about 18. He got a, a brain aneurysm and died in two days. And his parents were devastated and they had just found Baba too. And I don't, I, I know what that was about because it was Baba. He, as soon as he found Baba, Baba said, I got work for you over here. And you can't say that to his parents and not to mention it's a kind of a glib thing to say anyway. So I just was trying to, to be helpful. And, 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 you know, I said some, I was 18. I said things like, oh, he's with Baba now. And she, the mom was like, well, I wish he was here. Yeah, it was, it was heavy for me. But one of the things I remember was the, the boy's father was an illustrator. And I was, I was 17 or 18. I knew I wanted to be an artist or an illustrator. This guy had a lifetime. And he had a, a pad of paper. He was at our house. This may have been before his son died. And with a marker, he drew a gorgeous picture of Baba in about eight seconds, I guess. And it was a picture of Baba looking off to the side and, and a blow with his mustache. And then, anyway, unbelievable. And he wasn't even much of a Baba lover, but man, what an artist. And I loved that so much. And I remember, even though that was over 50 years ago, I still think about, I'm getting close to that. I can make a Baba in a few seconds and hand it to somebody. And that is something I tried to do for 50 years. And now it's there. And I'm like, what do I do with it now? <laughs> anyway, let's see. I was, I was getting on to one other thing. What was it? Um, oh. A lot of times, I mentioned earlier about the importance of framing. So those of you that are doing arts and crafts things, uh, when you go to thrift stores, I, I highly recommend this. Anybody that's into craft things. Thrift stores don't have a lot of stuff for artists, but they have picture frames. And no one is buying them, you'll find. Because the funkier they are, the less people want them to put their postcard art in so i found some remarkable picture frames at thrift stores and they generally they range from about two three dollars to five six dollars and i do a little work on them and i've got something ready to go for my finished picture so this was a mat that came in a piece that uh, a thrift store thing right here and it's got lovely little lace on it see there and it's a hand cut, it's got a hand cut bevel in it. So I know this is done by a pro, but it was in a picture. I think it was a picture of someone's saying or something. So I found the picture for it. And this is another Hermes reject 
uh oh, this might be the real thing. But anyway, this is what I'm going to do with it. And I'm going to keep it very subtle, not highly colored, because this is such a black and white thing. But I want to bring color into Baba's face here. It's the only thing it really needs. I may even leave the chinchilla coat the way it is in the background and just do the skin tones in the portrait. So that kind of shows you that oftentimes I will start with the picture frame, which is really strange. Uh, if I if you had told me that when I was a young man, I would say that's BS. You know, I say, oh, you want pictures that match your couch? You know, I'd say something like that. <laughs> Questions, guys? When are we going to do this again? How about Claire, next that? Saturday? <laughs> well, that may be a little soon, but uh, uh, also um, what I'd like what I'd like to get from this, Claire, you're going to see a lot of the responses, right? Yeah. Um, if you see anything that they wish I'd done more of, I could do something where I'm not trying to get through the whole mess in one one thing. Yeah, and I'll pass that along to you. Um, I did want to let you know, though, that at one o'clock, uh, they have another program going on. Okay. So we are, if we want to continue, uh, Diana's going to open up a break room for us if anyone wants to keep on with this, because this, this has been I'm absolutely tired. delightful. I'm tired. I skipped breakfast and drank too much coffee. So, <laughs> but I can easily do this because it really is a lot like what I did for a living. I mean, this is, that's a typical, pre you know, something I might give my students. Mm -hmm. well <laughs> but i had to keep it you know for non-artists somewhat so i hope you all got something out of it i really do well uh, thank you guys so and much and thank you roger main yeah. thing i want thank you, you to roger do, if, if if you love coloring this is where you need to go <laughs> telling you very this, good thank you so much thank you thank you, Jay Baba. Thank you. and Jay i Baba. just i just put my email in the chat if everyone if anyone want to email um me um you Roger also gave his email um, out as well. So, uh, oh my gosh, this has just been absolutely incredible. Oh, thank, thank you, Roger, so much. and thank you, everyone. I was so trepidatious. I was so trepidatious because I didn't, I didn't practice it or anything until this morning. That's when I set up the camera and all this. And I said, I knew Bob was going to get me through it though. He was just telling. He was laughing every time I got trepidatious. You know how that is when you when you're afraid of something and, and you see him back or going. <laughs> well, you did beautifully. Thank you so much. Thank, Thank you. you. Bye -bye. And I'll do Hello, it again. Rwanda. Uh, of course. Thank, Thank you, Roger. Fantastic. Thank, Thank you. Thank you so Thank much. You. Okay, Baba. Hey, hey, Baba. Wait, don't take away the chat yet. Hold on. Okay. I don't know if I can do that. Okay. I got it in. Okay. Uh, all right. You're Wonderful. Ready? Thank you all so much for your support. Thank you. Thank you, Roger. Thank you, Roger. Bye -bye. Bye -bye.